I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wrenches in my top drawer of my snap one box. Of my snap one box. I think I'm missing. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pliers in my bottom drawer of my snap one box. Get ready to fix some cars. Get ready to fix. Let's go. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is MJ. Today I'm going to do some rear struts on my 2004 Toyota Camry, also known as the greatest car of all time. <clears throat> I'll try to get this in one take, so I'm not going to edit anything. The hints are you want to use a jack underneath of the lower control arm, and you may need to cut these stabilizer links off because they're so rusty you can't get them out the right way. The right way is to use the Allen wrench and a, to hold it and then use a wrench to loosen the nut but it's not going to work if everything's rusty here we go so you got to get the back seat out first just pull up on it it's nothing there's no bolts attaching it so there you go pull up real hard and you're going to use a 12 millimeter socket to get this little bolt off the bottom of the seat cushion as you're about to see <coughs> All right, so there we go. Get that bolt out, lift that up, and lift it straight up. Careful not to break the plastic clip. And inside is, you're gonna see the bolts for the struts at the top. There you go, this is just the other side. They're the same on both sides. So there you go, you gotta get those out. I, I like to use a ratcheting wrench. I think it's a 14 millimeter, but there you go. Get those out. I'm gonna drink some delicious tea. <clears throat> there you go. All right. Then you're gonna jack it up. I like to put a little piece of wood under there to keep those pinch welds from getting all bent. When I was a mechanic, it's a lot easier to do struts when you have a lift. So I had to figure out how to do it without a lift. Cause I'm not a mechanic don't work as a mechanic anymore you definitely want to uh, if, it, the, if it won't come off you gotta hit it with a hammer if you got aluminum rims you might want to use a piece of wood before you start hitting it with a hammer so you go make sure to put that jack stand underneath too you don't want the car falling on you so like I said uh, I did the other side and uh, you can't get the stabilizer links off just using the traditional means. So I use the angle grinder with a metal cutting disc. This part is kind of dangerous. You definitely want to use some eye protection, wear your safety glasses. I know I don't have a guard on my angle grinder, but I have a pretty steady hand, so I'm not too worried about it. If you don't have a steady hand, you might not want to do this, but be very careful though because you don't want this angle grinder slipping out and cutting your fingers off it's kind of embarrassing to tell people that you cut your fingers off with an angle grinder because you don't know what you're doing so anyway yeah just be real careful I try to hold the angle grinder with two hands and you want to try to get into a good position so that you're real steady there you go you want I want to try to uh, it's a little bit hard to cut that bolt off without damaging the sway bar a little bit. But, I mean, look, it, I got to get it off, so <laughs> the sway bar will be all right. This is a little bit nicked up. It's all right. You only have to do the bottom part of the bolt, because of the uh, stabilizer link, because, you know, you're taking the strut out anyway. You don't have to get the top off. So I got it mostly off and then I just popped it off the rest with a chisel and a hammer. Sorry you couldn't see it, I'm not transparent unfortunately. So there, here we go. So you got it off. And then use a 19 millimeter socket to get the bottom bolts of the strut off. Like I said, I like to use another jack just to to give you some stabilization there when you're getting the strut out you don't want that 
that whole assembly just plopping around because it may damage some of the bushings that are attached it to the vehicle. So there you go. You want to you just want put a wrench on one side and then pop the uh, the bolt off the other side. There you go. And then you want to get the top part, the top bolts off of the strut, and then it will come out. There you go. Oh, you also have to disconnect the uh, the brake hose, but that, I mean that's pretty obvious. There you go. Get that on out of there. And uh, you want to match. Anytime you're doing another part, no matter where you get the part, always match it up to the old one. Make sure they're exactly the same. You don't know how many times parts are wrong or they're slightly manufactured differently. It'll anyway. So to get the strut in, my hint is to try to get the bottom part in first. Like, uh, don't put the bolts in, but just kind of wedge it into place. And then for this one, I found if you rotated the top part just a little bit, you could get it to line up with the holes. If you have somebody come help you, they could kind of see it, and then uh, they can throw those nuts on top so it won't slip out. There you go. And uh, I put a ladyfoot in there. That tool is called Ladyfoot. Just to kind of keep the holes aligned. This part is a little bit of a pain in the butt, but if you used a, another jack, you could kind of manipulate that lower assembly around a little bit. And then you use a Ladyfoot. Like, uh, if the Ladyfoot won't fit, I put like a flat, tip, flat a flathead screwdriver in to move it a little bit and then put the Ladyfoot in. And then you. You just gotta bang it in there a little bit. And then you tighten it. There you go. There we go. And then you wanna tighten those top bolts. Make sure those are all the way tight. And you're gonna put the stabilizer link in. I saw another video and the person recommended that you compress the struts for this part, but I don't think you need to do that if you use the another jack. That'll help you to um, to raise up that assembly a little bit and then you can hook up the stabilizer link into the hole properly there you go i don't like using those strut compressors the ones that you could buy at like AutoZone or something when i was a mechanic i would only use the strut compressors that were attached to the wall like the big assembly i don't like those those ones you get off the shelf it's too much it's too much it's too risky to try to compress that spring that's why i get those preloaded struts because um if you try to do that if that spring slips out that spring could break your arm or worse so i don't mess around with those i get preloaded and the preloaded struts i got here are from napa i replaced the front struts in this vehicle like six months ago with some AutoZone struts and they are terrible they make so much noise and uh, yeah, you don't want those. I was being cheap. I'm a cheapskate. Sometimes I gotta pay the extra money. But Toyota struts, they don't come pre-compressed or pre-loaded. And uh, they were like $400. They were like $600 for front and struts and springs. And Napa's was like 350. All those ones was like 150. <laughs> but that's too cheap. You can't get too cheap. All right, so there we go. Just, just reassembling everything basically. And then we can lower that down. Put the rim and tire back on. There we go. I'm gonna take this. Here's a quick hint about struts. Do you know I'm really good at X Men versus Street Fighter? I am like an expert at that game. Ryu and Wolverine, or either Ryu and Sabretooth. I will wreck, wreck you. If I ever see someone in the street that recognize me, I'm gonna challenge them to a game of X-Men versus Street Fighter. 
and I will be victorious. All right, anyway, yes, tighten the bolts in a star formation. Um, I would usually recommend using a, uh, what's it called, a torque wrench, but I'm confident in the torque from my gun. I feel like it's not too much, it's not too little, because I've had to change tires on this car in the, on the road, and I just, I had my impact in the trunk, and I just used that, and tires never came off. It'd be all right. But um, if you want to, you can look up the torque specs and torque them. There we go. Yeah, now you're done. Definitely get an alignment, though. Don't do your own alignment. It ain't going to work. I tried it. <laughs> Use it. I've done real alignments, and you definitely want to do a real alignment. Take it to a shop and let them do it. All right, bye. Have a good day. Have a good one.